Okay, this is the second of my random walkthrough possible uh, t revision topics for a, a human metabolism and endocrinology sort of exam. Last time looking at satiety. Um, so I'm just picking these at random. There will be another one, and that's all I'm going to do. But if you want me to do any more, let me know, and I will do another one of these. Or we can meet uh, at about a link or physically if you want to come in and talk to me about any of this stuff. I can certainly have a meeting. Uh, as usual, I recommend you go back to the original lecture and review the learning outcomes. And you should be able to write short definitions for terms like satiety and satiation and appetite and hunger. Um, this one's basics, Blundell's side, satiety cascade. Um, you should be able to draw it from scratch. Okay, I've drawn most of it there and left you some blanks to fill in. Uh, we'll be looking at the paper in a moment, which has some really good information written by Blundell. Uh, reviewing the whole of this tidy cascade and other factors as well. And there it is, a uh, bit from Blundell in 1999. Uh, so just open up. Go right back to the top. Uh, so it's, like it says, the basic concepts and practical implications. Uh, very well worth reading this. Uh, there's some general information about control of appetite, and there's a tidy cascade itself. Um, plus some diagrams which you may well remember from my lectures. Uh, talks about the role of leptin. I'm not sure whether it does ghrelin, so you may have to do a little bit more digging to find out about ghrelin. Um, so that's very well worth reading this paper. I strongly recommend this. And use it to be able to answer these questions. When, when you're reading things, you, your reading should be directed towards developing your understanding. So make sure you can distinguish between the terms we talked about earlier on, satiety and satiation. Uh, make sure you understand what's meant by cephalic response, which is, of course, going back to Pavlov and his dogs. Uh, and as an extra, say, real leptin and also probably ghrelin as well would be a good idea. Um, this is a tidy cascade. Can you draw that? Um, can you remember it's in that form? Do you want to draw a mind map? Do you want to write a little sort of essay on it? Whatever way you prefer to learn things. Uh, this is quite important. Uh, if you want more detail, uh, there's a good paper there on proteins and satiety, uh, which is asking the question, is there some of the Atkins diet? More of this in a moment. Now, remember that there are some nutrients, some micronutrients, which there's good evidence will promote satiety. Uh, protein is one of them. Um, Fibre is another one as well. Uh, if you have a little read of this paper, it might help you understand why protein seems to promote satiety. Um, here's a real example. Uh, there's a Marks and Spencer's product range called Full Longer, which has a large number of products these days, which is essentially a satiety claim based on the fact that the meal is high protein. Uh, there is a, obviously Marks and Spencer's have some information online about this, and also there's a video, which I don't know if I can find. Um, Okay, we'll just watch the uh, watch, watch the start of the video. Mm -hmm. I'm Claire screen. Hughes, and I'm the company nutritionist for Marks and Spencer. My name is Leslie Anderson, and I'm a product developer, and I look after specifically healthy meals within MS. We've developed a range called Simply Full or Longer, which is based on the principle that protein is the most satisfying of the nutrients, so it helps control your hunger longer than other nutrients such as fat and carbohydrate. The whole principle of this diet is based on the fact that the range is high in protein. However, it isn't a low carbohydrate diet, and unlike other high protein diets, we include many carbs in the range, including pasta, beans, pulses, and plenty of vegetables too. Um, about a year ago or so, the first speaker that speaker at that the uh, Nutrition Society's annual conference. Um, I mentioned that in passing. Uh, okay, so think about your notes, think about the effect that various other things have on uh, satiety. Uh, Fiber, as I mentioned, is important. Probably the most important single factor is energy density. Uh, does water have an effect? What about alcohol? Uh, as I've suggested before, you might want to think about writing your own questions and then writing model answers. Um, these we saw in the uh, lectures and they're well worth reviewing again. They're on YouTube, just look, look for uh, British Nutrition Foundation Satiety Podcasts. A couple of excellent podcasts getting over the basics. Um, and I say, it's, it's up to you to develop your own understanding whatever way you do. If you use a mind map or similar, similar visual, that's fine. 
Again, draw, write questions and think about model answers to those questions is always a good idea. Uh, I will arrange a link online seminar if people want it, uh, or alternately you can come in and see me or we can have a group meeting. It's up to you to let me know what you want. Okay, right, thanks for listening.